Today we are going to do what's in your kitchen 101. So normally when we would do life skills class in a real school setting, uh, I have a test that kids have to pass and it is uh, something I make them pass with 80% or higher because I want them to be able to know what they need and the names of all the things so that when the recipe calls for a certain item in the kitchen, they go for it and figure it out, okay? So we're gonna do a quick video here of all this stuff that is probably stuff that's on the test. I don't have one right in front of me, so I had to do it from memory. Hopefully I got most of it or, and obviously there's gonna be things that are left off, but these are some of the more common things that you're gonna find uh, in a kitchen and things that you're gonna need to use for recipes that you make, all right? We're gonna start with my favorite tool, most versatile tool ever, it's a rubber spatula. This is good for scraping the bowl out. If you have batter left or anything that's kind of stuck on that gravity isn't taken care of, you just scrape it out with this and it makes cleanup a lot easier, okay? Super versatile tool, great to have around. These guys, you can't use them without doing that first. Click, click. These are tongs, okay? Good for picking up hot things or sticky things or things you don't wanna touch with your fingers. This thing is a spatula, different than a rubber spatula because it's just called a spatula or a pancake flipping spatula, I don't know. Uh, sometimes this is called a scraper too, a rubber scraper. But usually if you're gonna talk about this guy, you're gonna call it a spatula. This thing is called a whisk. Whisks are good for putting air into a liquid, okay? And usually use it in a circular motion like that. Oftentimes I use it too with flour if I'm gonna make something with baking powder, baking soda, mix the, that into the flour so that you are essentially making a self-rising flour then and everything gets all nice and evenly made up. This is good for batter and liquid. Don't use this on dough, all right? This thing is a brush, basting brush, some people call it. Uh, mine is made of rubber. Yours might have regular kind of paint brush bristles on it. Um, this is good for putting uh, like the topping on the Cheddar Bay Biscuits, for example, or if you have uh, something that you're barbecuing, you can put the sauce on it uh, on the grill. All right, this is a slotted serving spoon. See how there's slots in the middle? What's that good for? Oh, I don't know, maybe picking up corn out of a liquid or green beans out of the water that the green beans are served in. Uh, this is something that you want to use if you want to get soup, if you're trying to get the chunks out of the soup and not too much broth. That's essentially separating solids from liquid, okay? This guy is called a rolling pin. We're gonna use that for some uh, cinnamon rolls probably, or some sort of bread dough, pie crust, paste, uh, pasty crust. I almost said it, said it wrong. All the youpers would be so upset with me. All right, these things are called measuring spoons collectively. Typically they're in a set, connected, so you, so you don't lose them, I guess. The big one is a tablespoon. Okay, tablespoon, like it's as big as a table. It's big. Teaspoon is small, like a teacup. Teacups are little, they go on tables. Three of these go into one of these. So if you use this instead of this for salt, for example, in your sugar cookies, uh, you're going to have really salty sugar cookies. That's a true story. It happened once in life skills class. We have lots of spectacular fails, but that's okay because we learn from them all. This guy is called a liquid measuring cup. If you're measuring something liquid, use that, okay? This thing is good for picking up noodles. For example, spaghetti noodles because it claws them up, okay? So anything that you need to scoop up that you need really good grip for, I don't know, that's what you'd use. This thing's called a ladle. You get a big amount of liquid scooped up with that. All right, we're gonna move on to our knives. This is a traditional shape of a chef knife. Mine's from Amway. Ooh, fancy knot. Okay, you're going to use the chef knife very carefully with your fingers wrapped around the handle right here. Some people pinch the blade like this and wrap their fingers around. Uh, I typically go right here in this, this little dent, but you do whatever is feel most comfortable for you. This is different than this kind of knife. See how this one has a blunt end there? This is a bread knife. It has teeth. The teeth are called serrated 
That's what make this knife, makes this knife serrated, okay? This is good for bread because it has the blunt end. That's typically what uh, we would call a bread knife. And this is just a regular serrated knife. Again, it has teeth, just a little bit different than the bread knife. And this is a pokey end. I don't know why, how it's different. Obviously, you could use this on bread. And you could use this on steak or vegetables. But for some reason, we've made a bunch of different knives for very specific tasks. A lot of these things are multi-use, but you want to use the best tool for the job. This thing is called a cutting board. You want to use a cutting board that's different than the one you would cut meat on or vegetables on. Plastic cutting board is good because nothing is going to sink into the board. You're going to be able to clean it really well and make sure that no bacteria lives on the surfaces. Okay. All right. Now we have measuring cups. Long time ago, I bought these. And a long time ago, all of the labels wore off because I use them a lot and then I wash them and now they're just gone. Because I've had a lot of experience with measuring cups, I can figure out which one is which pretty easily. I know that the smallest one is a fourth cup and the biggest one is a regular one cup. If you don't have any idea, a trick you can do is fill this with water and then put it in there that still has the writing on it and you can figure out what size cup it is and maybe you could etch it into there or burn it with like a, I don't know, something hot so that you could figure it out or I don't know, just memorize it. So if you're ever questioning what it is, just use a liquid measuring cup or something else to measure it into, all right? Or you can be really smart when you buy it and buy something that has a label like this that can't wash off, all right? Next, we have saucepans. A lot of people say, get me a pot. No, pot is never the answer. This is a saucepan. They come in various sizes. They're for making sauce in, thus the name. Saucepan. This thing is called a frying pan or a skillet. Uh, if you have a nonstick skillet, nonstick pan, you don't need to use spray or butter or as much butter. So that's something that is uh, good to have nonstick. Uh, people also use cast iron. You have a whole different cleaning process with that, uh, which I can't show you because I don't have anything cast iron here at the time or at, at this time. So uh, you'll have to YouTube that yourself. This thing is called a colander use that for draining things, or if you wanna wash some fruit, throw the fruit in there, rinse it off. All right, now we have a cake pan. This thing is called a nine by 13 cake pan. Why? Because this is nine inches and this is 13 inches. So if you're making a cake out of a box, on the back, it'll show you different baking times for different pans. If you're making round cakes, like an eight inch round pan, it'll have a different baking time because it's going to have a different level of batter in it. So you wanna make sure that you use the baking time that's appropriate for whatever pan you use. Okay, this guy, nine by 13. All right, now we have a cookie sheet. See how it's just flat and it doesn't have sides and it has this little lip to grab onto? That's good for making cookies. What you don't wanna do is roast a turkey on this or roast a chicken or anything that has juice. That will not work on a cookie sheet. What it will work on is this pan, okay? And this is a, it could be called a baking sheet or a baking pan or a jelly roll pan, but notice that it has sides. Now, you can make cookies on this, but you can make cookies on this as well, but you can't roast a chicken on this or put a piece of meat on there because the juice is just gonna fall off and make a big hot mess in the bottom of your oven which will cause your fire alarm to go off and then your neighbors alert the authorities. So you don't want that. All right, last thing, muffin tin or cupcake pan, some people call it. Uh, obviously good for making cupcakes. You probably want this to be nonstick as well, but most of the time you're gonna use these little cupcake, cupcake uh, baking liners to go inside and the cleanup is usually pretty easy after that. All right, so that's an overview of the most commonly used things in the kitchen. Uh, we have some other things that I'd like to show you too, the difference between, let's say, a hand towel. See how it's a big rectangle? That, my friends, is a hand towel or a dishcloth or dish towel. They could also come in something that looks like that, okay? 
a uh, little bit different material, but good for drying dishes. Then we have another thing called a dishcloth. It's smaller, it's a square. This is used for washing, you get this wet. This guy is used for drying. Could you use this for washing? Of course you could, it's just gonna be bigger and bulkier. Could you use this for drying? Of course you could, it's just small and not as absorbent because it's smaller. So again, using the best tool for the job is a pretty important thing. Uh, but if you don't have it, you can always improvise because cooking is pretty versatile. So hopefully you can go around your kitchen and start finding things and naming things so that if you are baking along with me, you know what I'm talking about when I say, go get yourself a nine by 13 cake pan, or make sure you strain this out using your colander, or get yourself a skillet. You uh, measure this using a liquid measuring cup and so on, okay? So go quiz yourself, find all your things in your kitchen, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon.